Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making lots of painting marks and, um, in our backgrounds. So this is a really handy background technique. You can use it on anything. You could do it on cardboard and cut it up for cards. You could do it on scrapbooking pages. It's just one of those things that you can do when you've got some extra paint around, some time and you just want to play. And you can make it as complex or as simple as you want. So when I'm starting off with doing these pages, I am working on a gessoed page and I do find it easier when I'm doing this technique to work on a gessoed page. I'm also putting out some extra white paint, which again, for those people who know me, is probably a little bit of an unusual thing for me to do. But this is all about layering up paint and working with paint while it's wet. So it's, um, you do need to think about what you're doing a little bit. The reason I put the black on the page is so I can paint over it and do what I'm doing here, which is scribing into the wet paint. So this is called scraffito. It's a fine art technique. Um, you'll find a lot of the, the arty, arty greats um, used to use it a lot in their, their artworks as well. Um, it does help if you've actually got a tool that will work well. Um, the two tools I used was a um, embossing stylus and the end of a metal skewer. They weren't working brilliantly. I'm going to go back over in a second and I actually found a pencil and I just scribed in with a, just a grey lead pencil into the paint and that worked a whole lot better. So you can see that down the bottom. Um, you'll notice when I'm putting down the paint, I'm using the white paint to blend it together. So I'm spreading out the paint as much as possible and then I'm going back in with the white paint just to blend it in together. I'm going over areas because I'm going to scribe in again, do some more mark making over the top. Um, this is just to sort of give a soft look. So in the past when I've done sort of backgrounds like this, I may have done patches of colour, but I haven't actually blended them together. So this is, I suppose, a little bit of a different go. And it just gives you a bit of a softer, more abstract look to your page. Again, um, the use of white is probably something a little bit different as well, but I've found that um, using the white just really helps to um, soften everything on the page. So the other thing that I'm doing, which you know some people find a little bit scary, is I'm not actually cleaning off my brush in between. My brush is still quite dry. It still had some of the little bit of blue paint on it. Um, it's got some of the white on it when I'm mixing everything together. So that lime that I put on isn't quite as bright as it should be because it had some white left on the paint. And that's what I wanted it to do because you're using the brush to do the hard work for you. It's doing the blending for you. You don't have to sort of think about it as much. Now with the sort of black on the page, um, where I did the scraffito, you can actually do that. You don't have to have black, you can do it over the, you can see the lime piece I had down there. I um, scraffitoed into it so you can see some of the pink color coming through. Um, it's just a different way to, to add stuff to your page. So now I'm just going in with the extra paint I have on my board, so that extra white, and doing some really simple mark making. This is a, um, a fun way to use the different paint brushes you've got in your your stash. So if you've got some really thin paint brushes or round paint brushes or something that's got a slightly different um, tip on it to use different marks. I know that I've got two young children and when they're doing some painting I actually play around with their paint brushes and you know make marks in their book next to them while they're painting their pictures and kids paint brushes because they're usually such terrible quality can actually make some really interesting marks so um, if you do have kids at home or you know they've been into your paint stash and they've dried up some of your brushes and stuff try them out for mark making see what sort of marks they make on your page because you might be really really surprised at how they go so with this technique you can stop at any stage I'm taking it to the the furthest nth degree on this page um, sort of as a demonstration I actually really like this page at the moment as it is um, I think it's sort of really beautiful and soft and a beautiful abstract It'd make a great canvas to hang in a uh, in a, a room as well I think with some sort of lights to billow lines over the top or something just to finish it off. I think that would be a perfect piece. But it's me 
So of course I'm going to add more to it. So just ignore everything I'm saying. But please, 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 if you're looking at that and going, I really like it like that, well, you just do it to that stage. So you do not need to do everything I do on this page. I decided as well as doing the paint mark making, I want to do some stamp mark making. So um, these are um, stamped images from Tracy Scott. One of her, well, I'd say one of her newest releases. I think she's had a release since um, she released this one. But um, this set, I think, is set... 41 and it's all mic making tools so it's got those splodges it's got the crosses it's got the lines and um, it's got really cool little dot patterns in it i'm using archival inks to stamp over this and the reason for that is because they're water they're not water soluble they're waterproof so um i can um still add paint still add ink over the top and i know they're going to stay where they're supposed to be uh acrylic ugh, acrylic Archival inks are oil based so do be aware if you do actually paint over the top of them you may find the colour will float to the top um, particularly if you use whites so I quite like that effect but um, if you're not 100% sure about it just try it with um, on a scrap piece of paper first have a go see what you like about it. So once I'd finished doing the stamping I added in some more black and white onto the page just to add a little bit of contrast and because in the background I had all that black to begin with but I did mic making and so on over the top so I just wanted to add a little bit extra in. I also decided because why not um, to add some stenciling to this page. So again you know you could not do the paint pen and just do stenciling, you could just use your paints to do the mics and um, you stop wherever you feel comfortable. Once I've finished, I used the metallic paint. This is um, Dina Wakeley Penny, I think, so it's sort of coppery colour. Just going in with a white Posca paint pen with really, really sketchy lines around the outside of my stars, just again to kind of pop them out from the background and um, make them a little bit of a focus. Now, the good thing about doing this sort of layer technique is the fact that you can still see through it. So even though it looks... Well, I have chucked the kitchen sink at it. I've got everything on this page. Um, because you're layering it up, you can see glimpses of what's behind it. So, for example, on the bottom of the right-hand page, where my hand is at the moment, on my arm, you can see those stars. You can still see the lines through them. And in some of the other stars, you can still see the colours through them. So uh, you don't have to hide everything on your page. It's still visible. Because I know a lot of people do all this work in the background, and think, oh, why am I covering it up now? As the, the very wise Diane Reevely does say, though, it's a background for a reason because it's in the background. So <laughs> it just depends what you're doing. But I actually like seeing the background come through to the beginning. So this is a new um, rice paper from Scrap FX by a um, very talented Aussie artist, Tanya Freud, who has drawn out these shapes. I really like them because there's something different. Uh, those people who've followed this channel for a little while know I'm obsessed by Dina Wakeley, but it's just nice to have some different faces and um, drawn in a different way. But I am doing what I usually do with the Dina Wakeley faces in that I'm um, colouring over the top just to make it more of a focal image again. I'm also going in with the Stabilo Woody, which is that chunkier pencil to colour in the eyes because... Um, I do like to make the eyes a focus. If I've got a face on the page, I like to colour in the whites of the eyes, put in the catch-alls and put in some colour in the eye, just so it reads more as a face. I'm also using some of the different colours Stabilo Oil pencils to colour in the background. So if you didn't realise, um, the black Stabilo Oil pencil, which is amazing, actually comes in six different colours. I think there's yellow, blue, green... And white. I think there's an orange as well. So you, you can get a few different um, colours of it. So they're water reactive so they do need to be the last thing you put on the page and obviously you don't put any water over the top of them unless you want to make them into a more water colour. The reason I like doing them um, as a colouring agent is because they're quite waxy and all, um, waxy is that the right? not really waxy, they're more creamy, but they, they go over the top of mixed media really, really well and they do blend really well together, even if you haven't used 
water. So um, I find them just really handy to have on the page. To balance off my page or to give my page a focus, I've decided to put a quote on it. And the quote I've used is, be gentle with you, because we always have to be gentle with you. At the moment, when I'm doing, doing or when I did this page, I um, had a raging cold, which, you know, isn't, very PC at this time of uh, the, what's happening in the world to have. Um, so I wasn't feeling great, but I was feeling really guilty because I couldn't go to work. And I was just like, no, nah, you're doing the right thing. You need to be gentle with yourself. It's okay. You can get better and you don't need to go into work um, just to make other people sick. So, you know, you're doing the right thing by staying home. So that's, that's what the message was. And in a lot of my pieces, um, I have to write messages to myself. The quotes I usually write on the pages are actually quotes that I need to tell myself. So here's a close-up of the original background before I actually added anything into it. As I said, when we were doing the background, you could have stopped at any stage. You could have stopped with just the painting and the scraffito or with the stamping or with the stenciling over the top. It is up to you how far you want to take that background. And this is it after I'd added the rice paper and put the quote on the page. So. Um, the rice paper face is from ScrapFX and I'll leave the link to that below in the description box. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got some ideas for creating some mic making and um, patterns within your backgrounds in your art journal page. As I said before, you could use that in any, you could use it on a night journal page, you could use it on a scrapbook page, you could do it on a piece of paper and cut it up and do it on cards. So be creative. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.